festival is a haven for the strange breed of daredevil entertainer known as the stand-up. The best thing about Polish immigration to Ireland is that I finally managed to fill up the XYZ section of my address book. There are stars like comedy hero Ardell O'Hanlon. Me and Tommy this year are celebrating 43 years of working together. Light entertainment legends, Cannon and Ball. I I'm controversial when it comes to drugs. I don't think cannibal cannab cannab I don't think cannibalism should be legalized, no. <laughs> I've heard of the munchies, but that's out of order. Fast talking funny man Des Clark. I lost three years of my life to heroin and all five years of methadone programs where you get to <laughs> Glasgow's internet legend Limmy all of them dealing with the terrible fear known as stage fright. I do get stage fright, not as bad as I used to get it. I think I used to be one of the worst. I know a guy, before he went on, used to go in the corner and used to puke up before every performance. And I'm sat inside of him. And that were him. I would say that probably without stage fright, I wouldn't be a comedian and I wouldn't have the style that I have. I kind of owe my career at stage fright. We actually met in a shingles, a shingles bar, a shingles bar, a shingles bar. I'm actually, I've got spots, give me a drink. At the hour or two beforehand, you just feel like, you know, you want to be anywhere else but there. What happens if I feel nervous, so I can relax, so I can kind of smile for one of the characters and people see me and they'll smile and then they go, the poor guy's up there dying. You're going to have flushes and palpitations. And most comics have their own coping strategies for facing the fear. We do two things when we're a bit worried. One is Bob will sit on his haunches mm. and not speak to anybody. And I have to say to him, leave him alone. He's building to go on stage. Look at his haircut. Look at that. Is that a number one? <laughs> when we were kids, that were called having nits. <laughs> I hire a, a, a short person um, to to shell pistachio nuts for me and to fire them into my mouth. And that helps me concentrate on, on something other than comedy and other than the, the show. I went through this period of listening to Metallica, but it just made me so angry and so aggressive that I had to stop that. I'm like a caged animal. I walk, pace, as long as I can keep moving, I'm happy. I pace up and down. Even when I'm in the house and I've got a really big gig later on that day, I'll just start the pacing. Someone bound to be experiencing stage jitters is Glasgow's comedy god of the internet, Limmy. But can he make the transition from online to on stage? My advice, if you've only done it on the internet, don't bother. <laughs> I'm not being funny, Because you will die. He's already got an audience, so he's got people that are familiar with his work. So although he hasn't done the circuit, he has found an audience and people that like what he does. So he's preaching to the converted. Here's another Culture Show exclusive, as this is his first ever full live show, most of which is way too dark for broadcast, but he proved himself to be Scotland's greatest new character comedian. By the way, you know, he didn't sing like me, this boy, no, this boy was uh, straight as a die, you know, he was like you, right? Or, <laughs> right, he was like you, right? <laughs> Not bad going, considering he made his debut in Britain's toughest city for stand-ups. I think they're already roused in Glasgow, which is sort of a great thing. And if you can just manage to surf that, then you're, you're in. So if they're not sure about you, they'll let you know very quickly. But it's not one of these audiences that will sit and smile. If they love you, they will welcome you into their big Ouija bosom. And, uh, and you will have the gig of your life. The fear, the stress, the dying leads to one final question. Why do it? Why do it? And to get upstairs, they look at me, I'm funny. There's got to be something wrong, do you? And once you have a taste for it, and once you have a sort of a facility for it, it's very, very hard to lose it or to leave it behind. <laughs> you know, I wish I could, but it's, it's, it's just exciting. Deep down, I don't know if every stand-up would admit this, but it's acceptance. And it's that acceptance when it goes well of, yes, I've achieved something. Uh, Woohoo! And then you just go, oh, got to do it again tomorrow. <laughs>